We're continuing our quest to solve simultaneous linear equations, and again, we're going to use the method of determinants. But here I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to give you a problem that actually has no solution. I said, well, wait a minute, how can two equations not have solutions? Don't they always cross? Well, there are cases where the two lines don't cross. The cases where if the two lines are perfectly parallel to one another, they will never cross. And if they never cross, there's never a point where they cross. So there is no x or y value for that point. There is no such point. And here's an example where we're going to run into a case like this. But again, to illustrate how we use the method of determinants, we'll go ahead and assume we don't know that yet, that this is going to happen. Uh, first, we'll look at it, and it's already in the correct form, the x and y on the left side, the constants on the right side, so we're ready to go. We can say that the, the x-coordinate of the point where they cross, if there was such a place, uh, has to equal the d sub x over the d, which is the determinant with the x-coordinates or I should say the x coefficients of the x variables replaced by the um, constants divided by the determinant of this set of equations. And the y value can be found by taking the d sub y and dividing by the d. All right, and again, I'll show you how to calculate the determinants for this problem. The determinant can be found by taking all the coefficients of the x and the y variables and placing them into your determinant. So we put in the 7, the minus 14, the minus 3, and the positive 6. And then we find the determinant by multiplying the numbers in the diagonal over here, and subtracting from that the product of those two. Okay, so 7 times 6, that's equal to 42. And a minus times a minus times a minus, ooh, that's a minus. 14 times 3, that's 42. And it means that the determinant is equal to 0. All right, that means that the denominator in both of these fractions is equal to 0. And right away, you become very suspicious because you know that there's no way you can have a 0 in the denominator of any fraction. That's simply an undefined number. So at this point, you could already stop and say, oh, that's undefined. Can do it. But just to get a little bit more practice, I'm going to calculate the d sub x and the d sub y for these two equations. So the d sub x is equal to the very same determinant, but by taking the coefficients of the x variables and replacing them by the constants here. So instead of 7, I write 4. Instead of a negative 14, I write a negative 7. The coefficients for the y variables stay the same, so the negative 3 and the 6 remain there. Now I go ahead and work this out. I multiply the 4 and the 6, and I subtract from that the product of the other two, which is a negative 3 and a negative 7. So that's equal to 4 times 6, which is 24, minus a 21, which is 3. So we place in here, instead of d sub x, we place a 3. For the d sub y, I take the very same determinant that I had here, but instead of writing the coefficients of the y variable, I plug in the 4 and the, 7, and the negative 7. So instead of a negative 3, I write a 4. Instead of a negative uh, positive 6, I write a negative 7. And then the coefficients of the x variable remain the same, like so. I now go ahead and calculate that by multiplying these two numbers together in this diagonal, so 7 times a negative 7 and subtracting from that the product of these two, which is a negative 14 and a positive 4. So 7 times a negative 7 is minus 49, and a minus times a minus, that's 40, that's 56. That's a positive 56, because a, a negative times a negative gives me a positive. And so this becomes a positive 7, which goes in here. But again, just like we discovered before, if you're going to divide by 0, you get an undefined number, so that's undefined. And this is undefined. And so, since there's neither a defined number for x or a defined number for y, we can say no solution, which probably means that the two lines are parallel. Now, just to make sure that is indeed the case, let's rewrite these equations in the form y equals mx plus b. 
that's a slope intercept form to see if they have the same slope because if those two lines have the same slope then they will never cross and therefore there's no solution and then we know we did it correctly. All right, let's take our first equation which is 7x minus 3y equals to 4. We move the 7x to the other side, we get minus 3y equals minus 7x plus 4. Then we divide both sides of the equation by a negative 3. So we get y equals negative 7 divided by negative 3 is 7 over 3x minus 4 over 3. We do the same with the second equation. So we have minus 14x plus 6y equals negative 7. We move the negative 14x across, so we get 6y is equal to a positive 14x minus 7. Then divide both sides of the equation by a 6. So we get y is equal to 14 divided by 6 is the 7 divided by 3x. And minus 7 over 6 is the place where it crosses the y-axis. And notice, there's the slope of the first line. There's the slope of the second line, and they're exactly the same, which means those two lines are parallel. They simply cross the y-axis in different places, but they have the exact same slope, so they cannot have a solution. We have a situation where these two lines are parallel. And right away we notice that by calculating the determinant, which meant we were going to have a zero in the denominator, which means undefined, no solution. That's how we do that. And the method of determinants is pretty good at figuring it out very quickly. As soon as we calculate this, we get a zero. We're probably done at that point.